going to walk you guys through setting up your 5D Mark II based on Vincent LaFerre's recommendations. First thing you want to do is set it to manual mode, then go into the menus, into the live view menu, select movie plus stills, and select movie display. Now go down to the movie record size and select 1920 by 1080, 24p. Next you want to make sure highlight tone priority is disabled. Finally, we're going to use the standard picture profile. This is the default picture profile you'll get with the camera, and while it's not recommended, we're going to use it to contrast three different picture profiles. So you want to make sure you set your ISO to either 160, 320, 640, or 1250, and stick to those numbers. That gives you the cleanest image out of the 5D Mark II. One final note, make sure you keep your shutter speed at 50. So let's have a look. All right, let's go back and change the picture profile. We'll go to user define one to set up the Vincent recommended picture profile. We're going to set it to neutral. Make sure sharpness is all the way down. Contrast set at negative four and saturation at negative two. and record. Finally, I want to use Technicolor Cine Style. This is a profile that needs to be installed on your camera. And we'll get into some of those details later on in the tutorial. Make sure the sharpness is down at zero. Contrast, negative four. Saturation, negative two. Selected, and we will record. As far as Vincent's recommendation for picture profile, use his neutral setting or use the cine style profile. All right, so we're in After Effects. I'm going to bring in those three clips that we just shot. Uh, After Effects is probably my favorite post-production tool, and one of the things that I really enjoy doing in it is color correction. So we're going to rename this clip. This is the standard. Setup, default out of the box. This is Vince's recommendation and Technicolor. All right, so let's take a look at the standard image. Now, the reason that we're showing you guys this is, in our opinion, it's really important to record as much dynamic range as possible to give you the most flexibility when color correcting. Now this workflow is all about color correction. You're going to have to do color correction. If you look at this image, things that I'm noticing, it's got a pretty aggressive grade on it. It's very contrasty, very saturated, in my opinion, overly sharpened. If you take a look at the histogram, you can see it's stretched from edge to edge, from highlights to shadows. These represent the midtones, and that is representative of a very contrasty image. Now, on a side note, the histogram, it's imperative that you monitor uh, what's going on when doing color correction with different monitors, histograms, scopes. And this can be found, this isn't standard within After Effects, this is a plugin called Test Gear. We've got waveform monitors, vector scopes, histograms, a lot of different utilities that really help you dig into color correction within After Effects. So I highly recommend it. And we'll be keeping an eye on this histogram as we go through this, this tutorial. So like I said, it's all about maximizing the amount of information that you're recording off the 5D sensor. Now the, the downside of this standard picture profile out of the box from Canon is that you're getting this very aggressive and overly sharpened image baked into your image and there's no going back. So let's take a look at Vince's recommendation. Compare the two side by side, you can immediately see that Vince's image is not as contrasty, it's not as sharp, and there's not as much saturation. If we take a look at the histogram, you can see the histogram is a little bit more compressed between the shadows and the highlights. Now let me switch over to the standard, and you can see it stretches it a bit, which makes sense because there's more contrast, more saturation. If we take a closer look, there's two important things to consider. First of all, you can see in the standard picture profile, it's very sharp. 
whereas this is quite a bit softer. Now when you add contrast, it's going to give the appearance of sharpness being added back in. And you can also incorporate a sharpening filter if you'd like to sharpen it up a little bit. Uh, and the second thing is, is there's a lot more information in the highlights and shadows. You can see these are, these are compressed. These are getting to the point where some of the blacks are right on the verge of being crushed. And you can see here the roll off is a lot softer. You have more information in the shadows. And the same goes for the highlights. This is nearly all white, and you've got more gradation here in the highlights in Vince's recommendation. So it's all about preserving the data, giving yourself more information to manipulate with color correction. All right, so let's lock that, and let's take a look at Technicolor. Now, Technicolor is interesting, and this is the Technicolor website. Technicolor worked with Canon for 12 months developing what it felt was the best way to maximize the dynamic range on the 5D sensor. And they have the picture profile, the cine style picture profile that you can download on their website and you have to install it on your 5D Mark II. And they also have what's called the LUT, which is a lookup table. And we'll get into a LUT here momentarily, but everything that you need to install the Cine style picture profile is on the Technicolor website. So if we take a look at the Cine style picture profile, you can see it's even flatter. It's even more compressed on the histogram than Vince's recommendation. It, it has the same softness characteristics, but the saturation and contrast are even less. And it's a vast difference from the initial out-of-the-box standard picture profile that Canon provides. All right, so let's do some color correction and let's take a look at Vince's recommended settings. I'm going to use a plugin called Colorista 2, which is from Red Giant Software and it's one of my favorite color correction tools within After Effects. I'm going to go down to the master section and what I want to do is I want to boost contrast and saturation. So I'm going to go down to this contrast control, I'm going to add some more contrast and, and what you can see is it's stretching this histogram from shadows to highlights and this is similar to the histogram. This is introducing an S-curve. So these are the shadows, these are the highlights. It's pulling the shadows down, lifting the highlights, which is creating contrast and boosting overall saturation. I want to lift the midtones a bit. And I'm going to increase saturation just a bit. Now this is giving us something similar to the standard picture profile in terms of contrast and saturation. We lock this and open that. You can see these images are starting to resemble one another. Now one of the main differences is this isn't as sharp, whereas this is, like I said, in my opinion, overly sharpened. All right, so let's check out this Technicolor picture profile. This is the flattest of them all, a very compressed histogram. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a plugin called LUT Buddy. Let's explore LUTs a bit. Now I could easily throw on Colorista 2, introduce a contrast curve, an S curve, and beef up this contrast, much like we did with Vince's recommendation. But let's do something with a LUT. Now a LUT is a lookup table, and it's basically a way to share information between different applications. What I'm going to do is I'm going to import the LUT that I downloaded from the Technicolor website. And this is a custom S-curve that Technicolor designed to maximize their cine style picture profile. I'm going to apply it and you can immediately see histogram is stretched, contrast and saturation are boosted. So let's turn it on and off and you can see it incorporates a lot more saturation. So this is doing what we did with Vince's recommendation but it's using a LUT. Now the cool thing about a LUT is if you want to duplicate these colors in say Final Cut you can import the clip and apply this LUT. If you want to do it in DaVinci Resolve or high-end applications such as Autodesk, 
uh, flame or smoke, you can utilize a LUT. All right, guys, so that's it. It's all about maximizing dynamic range and giving yourself the most flexibility in terms of color correction. Hopefully this helped you understand the differences between the standard Vince's recommendation and the Technicolor Cine style profile. And I appreciate you guys taking some time to watch. Thanks a lot.